So you may recall this device from a previous video. We uh, took it apart and unfortunately broke it, but it's back to life again. So I can now scribble as much as I want, click this button and it clears. So I've replaced the old broken PCB that I blew up with my new replacement and it's working really well. So this PCB generates 27 volts, which is enough to clear this LCD panel. So now we can scribble to our heart's content and it deletes it. It's almost a seamless repair. You'd never know I was here. It's no use, Ted. You'll never get it absolutely right. <laughs> well, it's not perfect. It does need a bit of work. I need to do a bit of surgery to get the battery to fit in properly and get the PCB to actually fit. But it does work nicely. So 27 volts clears it. Let's dig into the actual PCB and the assembly. So you may recall from the previous video, and if you don't, there should be a link up in the top right corner. We made a simple dual thief circuit to get 27 volts from our coin cell. We're using a slight variation of that simple circuit that adds regulation to the output. So once we reach our required output voltage, we don't use very much power. Now, as always, the PCBs came from PCBWay. I didn't order a stencil as they are pretty simple, but I did use my Volterra to print the solder paste. And after a few attempts, it came out okay. But I also wanted to practice a bit of soldering under the microscope, so I did a board manually as well. I definitely need some more practice under the microscope. I did order some additional blister buttons, but I got ones that were slightly too large for my PCB. Fortunately, I was able to salvage the one off the old board, and it works fine. The assembled PCB is pretty simple. On the input side of things, we have an inrush limiter resistor of 120 ohms, and a reservoir capacitor of 10 microfarads. This presents us stressing our coin cell too much. This goes straight to the blister button on the other side of the board. On the output, we have another 10 microfarad capacitor and a 1 mega ohm bleed resistor across that. The heavy lifting is done by these two inductors. They're 220 microhenries. They are close enough together that they magnetically couple. The only crucial thing is with these is to solder them in opposite directions. If you don't do that, the circuit won't work. Regulation of the output is controlled by this 27 volt Zener diode. This feeds into a second transistor that pulls the base of the main transistor low once we've reached our required voltage. It's a pretty cool circuit. So let's measure the actual power consumption of our little dual thief. So I've got my power profiler kit set up here. So in this configuration, I've got it it's actually supplying power. So it was a bit uh, confusing with all these wires. We've got the multimeter hooked up to the two output pads. So that will check that we are getting our 27 volts on the output. And then we have the V out from the power profiler going into our positive connection. I've got one of the grounds connected. So what I'll do in the actual app, I've got the supply voltage set to 3.3 millivolts. Let's change that to 3.2. So 3.2 volts. And then we turn on the output. And then we can start monitoring. So obviously, at the moment, we should have very little current flowing. So looks like we're averaging, well, look. 0.112 and 0.12 microamps. Maybe we can check that if we just select some range. Then yeah, 0.12. So let's actually click the button and see what happens. So uh, where is my button? So we should see this jump up to 27 volts. There we go. That's one, two, three. Okay, so let's stop this and then we can see what our consumption is. So let's zoom in a bit and then scroll across. And zoom is ridiculously sensitive on this um, on this UI. But uh, here we go. So what we can see is we initially get a spike of current. So when we first push the button, we spike up to 19 milliamps and we average 17 milliamps. And then the regulator cuts in, so we get up to our 27 volts. And then whilst it's regulating, we are just drawing on average 7.26 milliamps with a peak of 10 milliamps. So that's quite acceptable for a coin cell. So if we take our 
total time. And if we look down here, we can zoom 7.29 millicoulombs of charge, and we average 7 milliamps. So that's more than acceptable for a, for a little coin cell. But what I do want to do is try it out with a coin cell. So let me rewire this so that we're not using the internal power. We'll route power from the coin cell through the power profiler to our board, and then we'll measure the current consumption with our coin cell supply. Okay, so I've switched over to using our own power supply. So we've got the coin cell here. So now the coin cell goes through the Nordic power meter, through the amp meter, out into our board, and then we have the measurement going. So again, until we push the button, not much happens. Um, so let's try pushing the button, see what goes on. So there we go once, twice, three times. We're still hitting our nice 27 volts. So let's stop that, and then we'll just scroll back to one of these things and see, see if there's any difference. So let's try and zoom in. Okay, so let's select the first part. So the initial part um, jumps up to 18 milliamps. I'm still very acceptable for a coin cell. Average is 16 milliamps. And then when we're actually regulating, should be pretty similar. So 7.6 milliamps. On average, 2.9 millicoulombs. We take the total time. And 3.93 millicoulombs to get 27 volts. So that should last quite a long time on a coin cell. Let's wire it up into the original device and see if it does actually work. Assuming you didn't skip the start of the video, you know this works already. Um, but there we go, it works quite nicely, so we can scribble to our heart's content, and then push the button, and it, um, it clears. So, you should like, and subscribe. So, the only slight thing that's gone a bit wonky is obviously these two um, plates have started to come apart. Um, so that's a bit of a shame, but uh, this was very cheap, so it doesn't matter that much. Uh, I need to do a bit of work to get the battery to fit in nicely. And obviously, the two inductors do protrude slightly more than the original PCB. But um, with a bit of uh, shuffling around, it will fit in nicely. I have lost the battery compartment somewhere. That's somewhere on my desk, but I'll find that. And I'll remove this battery and put the two clips from the original PCB onto this PCB. But I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this. Let's see, uh, as I say, it's a seamless repair. So, not bad. So, yeah, we can uh, now make our shopping list and do all sorts of stuff. So, uh, what should we have? Uh, I'm not sure what I'm writing. Eggs. Yeah. Eggs. Bacon. Well, you get the idea. Fun little machine. Um, it's fixed. Brilliant.